Todd Holtman from DTN is our market analyst this week. Based on conditions, as of September 1st, the U.S. Department of Agriculture believes the country's growers will harvest a 15.1 billion bushel corn crop and a 4.2 billion bushel soybean crop. Both totals would easily be new records, as would the expected average yields. In its September crop report released Monday, the USDA said it's expecting 174.4 bushels per acre in corn and 50.6 bushels per acre in soybeans. Nebraska's production is still projected to be the best ever in both crops. We talked with Todd here Thursday morning and began by asking for his initial thoughts on the agency's latest estimates. It was a bit of a bearish gasp for traders, especially on the soybean number. We all knew those crop ratings were high, some of the some of the best we've seen in over a decade, and yet it was still a bit of a shock to see a print of yield above 50 bushels an acre. So uh, that did take the market for a spin uh, a bit there. Also on the corn, I think it was disappointing to many that the yield estimate did not come down as much as it did. We're still talking about 15 billion bushels of corn harvest, and I do have a little bit of concern about that going ahead. But overall, I don't think there's a strong argument that we aren't going to add to corn supplies this fall. Your question is that, are the conditions good enough? Yeah, uh, the, the wide variability of yields that we're hearing from different places. Uh, you know, the Pro Farmer Tour rightly raised those uh, uh, questions about it. And I think others in the field have confirmed that, yes, overall, the crop does look very good, but there is a lot of variability out there. It may not be as good as advertised. So how did the September estimates change the balance sheet for corn and soybeans? Well, it's still very heavy for corn supplies. 2.4 billion bushels of ending corn stocks is a lot for corn. Uh, there's no change there. And th if there's any good news on the price front, we've already anticipated this the last six or seven weeks. So it's not a, a big shock to prices, although it is keeping them down. Uh, on soybeans, it was a bit more of a shock. Uh, I, I think there were some non-commercials that liquidated their long positions after that report. So a, a bit of a panic out there. But overall, I think the soybean uh, market has a, a much better future ahead to, to find support. Yeah, let's talk about that. You have a record crop in the U.S., record crops in Brazil. And yet, if you look at the ending stocks in the U.S., they're still relatively tight. What does that say about use? Yeah, if I'm a soybean user, I have to be very concerned about the outlook ahead. We've had about four uh, record or almost record harvest from Brazil. We've had three big crops here in the U.S. And even after all of that, our ending stocks estimates are not very big at all. Uh, barely enough to cover maybe two weeks of, of world production. So in spite of that streak of good growing weather, which as we all know, doesn't last forever, what are we gonna do if there is a weather hiccup? Uh, as I look ahead to Brazil's new crop that's coming up right now, if we see any downgrade in that crop, any weather concern at all, it's going to throw a serious wrench into our uh, outlook for supplies. Because of the prices, because of the exchange ratio, what do you think farmers in Brazil are going to do when they come around to their next planting season? Well, they're actually looking at, at a pretty good price in locally in Brazil right now. So we're looking at an acreage increase of about 2 to 3% this year for Brazil soybeans and probably a production increase of about 5%. That's what USDA is saying right now. And that's probably not unreasonable to start with. Keep in mind, however, even with that big new record crop that they're gonna forecast, that 5% increase, they're still only looking at ending stocks in the new season of 85 million bushels. So that's where I say, if there's any production problem at all, we've got a supply problem. So across the board in Argentina, there are reports that they might not be able to go down further on their export tax, which they had hoped to do. Uh, can you explain why that is and what are the implications of it? You know, it seems to be a political challenge in Argentina, and I don't know if it's just that they don't feel that they can afford to give up that revenue seems to be part of the issue here. Uh, but the campaign promise was that they would reduce that export tax five points every year. And so this year they were supposed to go from a 30% export tax to 25. As far as we're concerned, a 25% export tax on the gross of a soybean sale is still prohibitive and does not encourage a lot of soybean sales out of Argentina. Let's come back to the U.S. and talk about your price forecast. Before we do that, just what's happening now? And if you look at wheat prices, is there anything, any correlation between wheat and two corn and soybeans? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the wheat is the most bearish factor on both of those markets right now, but especially for corn. Not only is it taking feed demand away, but in this current season, it gave us 4 million new acres, which were put into corn. 
and I'm very concerned that we're probably going to see the next, uh, the same thing happen again this fall as they go to plant winter wheat. Less, less wheat acres makes more available for corn and soybeans, and so we're looking at more expansion in the spring. Give me your price forecast and kind of the window that you're looking at. Well, right now, of course, we're at harvest time, and of course, every year we're at Grand Island, it's always harvest time. Prices are depressed when we've got good crops on the way. That's understandable, and, and that's the way it goes. For corn, once we get this harvest in the rear view mirror and start to look ahead and get the corn stored away to where commercials have to bid up to pull it out of farmers' hands, I think we could see a 40 to 50 cent appreciation early into 2017. For soybeans, I have to say there's much more potential there, uh, and, and it's walking a tight wire. We could have excess stocks or we could have a very tight supply. Uh, the door really is wide open on the potential for soybean prices.